What's up, SML? Welcome back. It's uh, it's SML No Way Home. It's season three, but it's also season one. Who knows? But we're back for more playoff action. Joined today by uh, by my usual co-host, the Mad Bomber, and our reigning champ, kind of. Uh, QP, what's good, boys? Oh, what's looking up, brother? forward to this. Got the playoffs coming. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. This is going to be a great playoff. <clears throat> We've already had uh, Eminem has, has given us a, a breakdown already. Uh, Matt was, you know, saying how he's excited for these playoffs, and and I agree. I don't think there's, you know, a runaway favorite. There's no, uh, you know, prime with the Chiefs and Cam Jordan. Um, it's really just a wide open field. So excited to uh, to break it down. We're gonna gonna tackle both sides of the bracket. Um, meets maybe look away for the second section because then we've got the pressure gauge introducing the brand new folding chair scale. So uh, so it should be a lot of fun. Um, but if you want to start bomber, I know you got the NFC. All right. So, uh, I'll take the NFC and, uh, I'll start at the, at the two seed game with, uh, with Nolan doink face. And this one we've already seen, I guess, go to the third quarter before magically disconnecting with Noel having a decent lead. Um, you know what, if it depends what they're going to do, I, I assume they're going to try to recreate it. Um, so I'll, I'll say, I think Noel's going to hold off doink face and, and win it, but I mean, you get those restarts and. And even though it's recreated, you, you never know how that momentum is going to change. So I could see Doink Face pulling it out, but I'm, I'm going to go with Noel since he had the lead already. Yeah, for sure. Q, and you can jump in. I'm I'm NFC, so I'm going to mostly stay out of it. But you uh, you and Bomber can take it away, and then kind of you can kind of be our color guy. Yeah, I just don't think uh, I don't think in the one quarter. From what I heard, is like 47 seconds or something like that in the third left. Yeah. I don't know if uh, if that's I think it's too big of a deficit for Doink Face to come back from. Yeah, I think it'll definitely be tough. But like I said, with Madden, you never know. One quarter's plenty of time. Oh, we lost Q again. <laughs> there he goes again. Callie's having some issues. Bad too, internet, right? yeah. It is. No, t- no <laughs> tornadoes, just shitty internet. <laughs> uh, do you want to go through the, the whole NFC, or do you want me to take my two versus seven in the AFC? Um, I can go through the rest of the NFC. I'm going to disconnect and reconnect, so see if we get him back. Okay. All right, got him back again. There we go. All right, so we'll move on to, uh, let's see, that would put uh, the two seed down at the bottom. So then we have uh, the Giants and the Panthers with you and Pauly. I think uh, think they kind of hit it on the head on Eminem that I think you're going to be the favorite. I think this is a really tough matchup for Pauly. Um, I know we didn't see a ton of McCaffrey during the year, but I think we'll see more uh, as you play a Pauly defense. And I, I think uh, I think it's actually going to be. I disagree with them saying it's going to be close. I think you're going to beat him by a, a pretty sizable margin. Yeah, I think the same thing. I uh, I think that for sure that this is probably the last team that Polly wanted to face in the first round to get out uh, and probably feel good about himself and get confident. And I think that Faz is going to come pre- prepared. Uh, Polly's kind of been on Faz's head all season. It's going to be interesting. But I got Faz also by. Two scores, 35-21. Okay. Yeah, he's somebody that would feel good to knock out, that's for sure. (laughs) So that would then bring us to the Cardinals and uh, NYT against Dan and his Falcons. I mean, it's it's, it's a great story. NYT made the playoffs. Somebody from the the (laughs) NFC West made it. But uh, I think that's where that NFC West ends right there is in the first round. I don't think there's any way Dan loses to NYT, especially after, what was it, two cycles ago. He... uh, he still hasn't heard the end of losing to NYT in the playoffs. So I think Dan comes in very prepared and he's going to win this one. I think NYT's playing with house money. I think that uh, everybody obviously expects Dan to win and it's going to be interesting to watch the battle without Kyle Pitts. I want to see how Dan, we know it's going to be a lot of running backs, a lot of drags. Uh, without Kyle Pitts, it's going to be interesting to see what NYT does to defend it. Yeah, I mean, and he did make a run last mini cycle whatever you want to call that that last little bit we had um he did make a run and almost make the super bowl so um it's possible i just think dan's going to come in super prepared for this one because of it being myt yeah all right so that would make it uh what we have we'd have two against two against five and you and future future's got the best of you twice this season i there's no way it happens three times i know he's playing great but um beating anyone three times in a season is tough and then you talk about you with the Panthers. Um, that's that's even tougher. So I, I think it may be close because he's playing really well with the Saints. I mean, we've seen mm-hmm. 
time and time again have big wins. I just don't think he wins three against the Panthers this season. So I'm going to have you moving on to the NFC Championship. To quote the great prime, yeah, uh, future might be back. But I think, like you said, three games in a row in a season. I think if Faz can stop the inside zone out of the shotgun early, um, it's going to be interesting to see what future does to counterattack that. Yeah, and, and so yeah, future's oh, a tough ahead. matchup for me. He uh, he can run a lot of man coverage, um, which then you know you're you're relying on Jordan Love's arm, which is getting better, still not quite there. Uh, and also, Demario Davis is everywhere, stopping the run. So it's not a great matchup, but I definitely would like to uh, kind of cleanse the zero and two record. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Uh, listening to Eminem on the way home today. We all talked about, you know, his future back, his future back. I didn't realize future back meant like 11 and 12 wins, no Super Bowl appearances. I thought from the way they talked, like he was in the Super Bowl pretty frequently. Um, if that's the case, then even future being back, I don't think he beats you three times. Yeah. All right. So that puts the Panthers in the NFC Championship and then the Packers against Dan and the Falcons. Man, I know Noel's playing really well, but it's still tough to to bet against Dan playing against Noel. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say Dan again wins this one. Um, Noel played really well against me, especially his passing game. But it's Dan. It's it's the Falcons. He's he's gotten this far with them. Um, I think by then he might have Pitts back, which would be huge. I I gotta take Dan and uh, and we'll have a Falcons Panthers. Uh, match up for a third time this time in the NFC championship. Yeah. I think something similar is probably going to happen most likely. Uh, but what it's interesting is no place, the flat routes, the drag routes, the slants, the run, the dump offs to the running back. Very, very good in the past defense. That's his bread and butter. Actually. Yeah. It's how he's, that's what I realized in the second half. And Dan all season has been a check down artist. Uh, in my opinion, you know, he hits the deeper shots to Kyle Pitts, but a lot of it's check down routes, and that's what Noel succeeds at. So it's going to be really interesting to see the battle. Uh, also, who has the home field advantage? Is it Noel? It, it would Noel, be Noel. Yeah, We might seed, see a so. snow game. We might see a snow game, which obviously cool. benefits Dan as well, which yeah. is a run because he, he's running the ball. But if he can't get those passes off, if uh, Noel's pressure gets there early, it might be an interesting one. But I do have Dan. I, it's just based off uh, what I've seen personally, I know we've seen Noel, but I haven't seen that Noel that everybody talks about. So based off of that, I also have Dan uh, advancing. Yeah, I mean, the, we don't see a, a wild card team from any division other than the NFC South. Um, so what that tells me is none of the other divisions were very good because that NFC South was tough. And if you're coming through there with 10 plus wins, you probably yeah. didn't have much trouble with anybody outside your division. Um, except and, for Woods. We all suck against Woods. Wood. But he's on the other <laughs> side of the bracket, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, um, we don't have to worry about him, thankfully. So if we've got Dan Faz, I gotta go with the better team. You guys I think you split during the regular season. You've got the better team. I think the even the quarterback is probably a toss up with him using uh Teddy Bridgewater. And I think just as you go further on, I mean, you got that wild card round, you're gonna get training and, and stats with uh with love to get you XP. The divisional round will get you more. And and by the NFC championship, he's probably gonna be pretty decent. I think they may even have the uh, the awards by then. Maybe Love wins something, gets some XP uh, bonuses by then. I, th I think the Panthers are going to win that game. This one's going to be a good one. Uh, I think that it's is all going to be predicated off of what Jordan Love looks like early on. Uh, yeah. If he's connecting on his passes early, I think Faz's confidence grows as well as the game uh, flow, of, I should say. Um if he's getting his passes off early, I think Faz is going to win this because he's going to be a little bit settled in and knows the offense that he can run. Uh, if he's not hitting on his passes early, I think that he's going to be in for maybe a snore fest uh, where Dan does give the ball to his guys 30 times and uh, he just lulls them to sleep right up the field. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to stick with Faz. I'm going to stick with Faz, obviously. Uh, you know, We're in the same group, so I'm always riding with him. I think he's going to win this one by a close margin. I'll say 31-27. All right. So that leaves Man, me, I was uh, kind of getting ready to fly under the radar here. I thought I was going to be one of those low-key sleeper teams. I don't know what team <sighs> would be uh would be the favorite if it's not you then. Um maybe yeah, that's the future fair. being the the one seed, but I just I think I forget who I think Eminem, well Eminem had uh had Doinks and well, Rip. Yeah. So <laughs> 
that's true. <laughs> yeah, so maybe not there, but that'll uh, that'll take us to the AFC here. Uh, and I'll start two versus seven, and this is a very interesting matchup, divisional one. Uh, we got we got double race, no beans as the two seed, and then uh, in prime time zero 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 as the seven. Uh, and I'll be honest, I think you can throw the seeds out the window. I don't think there's anybody who expects Beans to win this game. Um, maybe if Derrick Henry gets lit up within the first like quarter or two, uh, maybe yeah. he can hang around. But I think Prime, they've played twice, they split. Um, Prime's offense right now isn't you know humming. It's you know, the Carson Wentz effect. He's terrible. Um, wide receivers are pretty bad too. But I think you give Prime a third game against a guy – and against a guy who's who's pretty limited offensively himself, I don't think there's any shot that uh that Prime loses this one, regardless of you know seven seed or playing away or anything else really. Yeah, I, I'd agree yeah. with that. Mm-hmm. Are they playing tomorrow or today? I think I tomorrow. Saw tomorrow. I think. Okay, I think that for me personally, I think the pressure is gonna uh, rise. You know how Prime hypes his games up; he brings all eyes upon him, even if he's playing, you know, a one in eight team. Yeah. Uh, I think Double Rice is going to be in for one. I think that he obviously he's had success with Derrick Henry, but the playoff prime is different. We all know that. Um, I think that this is going to be a seven seed upset. I think it's going to be a defensive fest. He's going to actually make a statement. I'll probably say twenty four to uh, ten. Prime. Yeah, prime is good at taking away what your one thing is, and if you yeah. only have one thing, that yeah. that's a big problem. Um, mm-hmm. and, and prime won the second matchup probably because. He played him once, realized what he wanted to do, and and he just took it away the second time. And and Bean had yeah. no no answer for it. That's fifty seven yards for Derrick Henry. He had no other yeah no other uh, offense outside of that. So yeah, I think he's gonna. If do he it. takes away Julio, I think if he takes away Julio early on, I think especially if he takes away Julio in the passing game, not early on, but in the passing game, uh, you know, like you guys said, he's gonna he's gonna try to focus and take away Derrick Henry. If he takes that away, all he has to do is focus on Julio and. Like I said, I don't think uh, Bean is in. It's ready for playoff prime yet. Yep, not at all. Yeah, yeah. Playoff prime is is a whole different beast, as a, as all three of us know very well. Um, so Beans, uh, give it your best shot. I think it's going to be a tough one for you. Um, next matchup, three versus six. We got Meats coming in the three uh, against Spades, and this is, I think, to me, the most intriguing matchup of the first round in both conferences. Um, I can definitely see it going either way because of the way that both of them play. I feel like they're very similar. So Meats on offense, you know that you know he wants to run the ball and he's going to throw verts and he's going to throw drags. With Spades, you know that he's going to run his stretches and then he's going to try and bomb you. Um, so it's basically you know both of them very, I guess, kind of limited in what they do on offense that are just going to keep doing it to each other, you know, starting the game all the way to the finish, regardless of adjustments or anything else. Defensively, neither of them are all that good. Um, so I feel like, you know, you're, you're not playing against somebody who can shut down the thing that, that you want to do the most. So I think this could end up just being, you know, a high-scoring slugfest where whoever ends up with the ball last uh, ends up winning. Uh, I have Spades winning this one. I think his defense is a little bit better than the Chargers. Uh, and I think that... You know, meets he plays a lot of cover three. We know that a lot of cover three. He'll throw in some man blitzes here and there. Um, that's not a great defensive game plan against somebody who just wants to bomb to Michael Hardman the whole time. Um, so I, I think he's going to give up one or two of those huge plays, uh, and I think that's going to be you know what what kind of breaks him in this one. So I've got Spades moving on. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that. Um, I know he beat him pretty badly the first time, and yeah. and I have a feeling it's going to just be more of the same. Yeah, I think same thing. If especially if Meats can't stop the run, if he doesn't stop the run early on, uh, he's going to be at Spades' mercy. He's going to do whatever he wants. I don't have a lot of confidence in Meats uh, this year, at least, and I think Spades is just a little bit more dynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah going to be uh, again. Like I, th- I think it's going to be really high scoring. Should be very fun to watch. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I think Spades is going to come out on top, and then Bomber. Uh, we got your matchup. Uh, you're coming in actually as the five seed, uh, which you know was surprising to me. And then Woods winning the uh, the AFC East barely, uh, coming in at the four seed. 
this is a rematch of you know one of the crazier upsets from last cycle. Um, oh yeah, haven't forgotten. <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, Jags, Jags, Browns. Um, I don't think it happens again. Uh, Woods is playing much better with the Bills, um, as myself and my entire division can attest to. Um, but there's just really, I don't think any way. Um, you're not going to be pushing for a Mayfield upgrade. You're going to give the ball to Chubb. Um, and the Buffalo defense is pretty good, but as I'm well aware of, the run D is not fully there season one. Uh, Chubb gets lit up. It's pretty much a wrap. Woods can be reckless with the football. Uh, he turns the ball over once or twice, and, and I think that's all she wrote. So uh, I actually have you finishing out my my full upset first round, uh, every lower seed with a W. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> actually, yeah. On the on the NFC yeah. side, yeah, or AFC, yeah. Yeah, and the in the AFC, every lower seed with a win. Yep. Yeah, I don't. Like I said, I don't forget that uh that upset, and a lot of that I think I kind of took it for granted. I think I'd already won two or three in the playoffs against them, and and kind of just penciled that in as a win, and and took him lightly, and uh, that won't happen again. Yeah, I don't I don't see it happening again either. I think uh, playoff bomber is going to come out. He's going to give the ball to Chubb a lot. And uh, he's going to let him do the rest. Yeah, I would expect to see a lot of Chubb. I can see a 28-3 to game. I hope so. The defense hasn't quite been that good, so we'll see. But uh, it's possible. Yeah, I, I think you'll get one or two Josh Allen hero plays where you know he gets outside and he throws you know, a yeah. gazillion yard bomb down the field. Um, but I think that, you know, Bomber, you're probably going to come out, take control early, and I think you're going to you know, maintain yeah. it throughout the rest of the game there. All right, so that uh, that'll uh, bring us to. Oh, yeah. sorry. Go oh, I was just gonna read off the matchups then for you. That would be oh, uh, that works. That'd be Prime against QP, and then me against Spades. Yes, very, uh, very fun second round. I think uh, Q. We'll start with yours. I know Prime is not an ideal first playoff matchup, um, <laughs> especially as the one seed. That seems like a really yeah, bad break. Uh, <laughs> um, but still, I think that. I have to lean you in this one, and I think it's mostly, I think it's a lot team related. Um, I just think the Ravens are just in a better spot early on. Uh, obviously, you, you do know how to play Prime. Um, you know, coming off a Super Bowl victory against him, he's not going to forget that. Uh, you know, he's going to come out and, and give it his all. But I think Carson Wentz is just going to be too much to overcome early on. The Ravens' defense is is nice. Um, you can stop the run, which is his biggest threat, and I just. His defense is good, but all it takes is a couple, you know, Lamar miracle plays, and he's going to be in a tough spot uh, where he's going to have to come back. And I think it's just going to be a little too much early on. Uh, but it would not surprise me to see this matchup uh, very often in the future of the the AFC playoffs. Yeah, I, uh, it's not an ideal matchup. Obviously, seven seed is stinking prime as a seven seed is just crazy. Um, I think that for sure, if I stop the run early, I'm 3-1 and one versus Prime all time. So if I stop the run early, uh, I do like my chances. And if, if I don't stop the run early, it's going to be it's gonna be a hard game. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's going to be the key against Prime is, is the run game. We all know and have heard that Carson Wentz isn't, isn't helping him any there in Indianapolis. So if you mm -hmm. can just stop that run and force Wentz to throw, I think that's where he gets in trouble. But... Prime's defense in the playoffs seems to uh, kind of turn it. Always out. amps up. So it'll yeah, be, it'll be interesting sure. to see. I I still don't think there's any way you with the Ravens lose to the Colts um, after he just had the Chiefs and you had the Lions and beat them. So I think with the, with the talent flip-flopped and then you end up with the better team, I, I think it's going to be a Ravens win. Hopefully. Yeah, I think the big thing is just, Q, you're going to be able to run the ball, whether it be with JK or with Lamar. Um, I think that's just going to be so hard for him to stop. He does have Buckner on the line, but you yeah. know, he doesn't have anybody else. So yeah. I think that's going to be a little too much for him to overcome. And I'm sure he's taking notes and he's going to plaster I'm that all sure. over yeah. his TV. Yeah, he and, <laughs> you know, he's, he's ready to prove us all wrong, but it might be a lot in season one. Um, other half of the bracket then, uh, the AFC North battle. Oh, do we lose fast? Uh, Bomber and oh, Spades. Yeah. Guys, so. No, I'm here. Hello. All right. Yeah, Hi. you were cutting out. No, you're here. Yeah, you're cutting right, out. Cool. Um, so yeah, Bomber Spades. I believe you guys split in the regular season. Yep, if I'm correct did. on that, yep. you did. 
Um, so yeah, again, this is going to be another fun matchup. AFC is a very fun playoff bracket. Um, but there's no way I'm taking, uh, taking spades in this one. I, I just think that, you know, playoff bomber again is, is another different, different thing entirely. Again, you're not forcing the ball with Mayfield. You're giving the ball to Chubb. You're doing what works. Um, spades does have a good run defense. Um, but Chubb is just better than a good run defense. Honestly, uh, he's stiff arming guys, putting them in the grave, um, trucking people. He, if he gets lit up, it's, it's a wrap. Um, and spades is just to me too reckless. You have an opportunistic defense. Uh, you do kind of bleed yards a little bit. Um, but you always are, you know, top of the leaderboard in turnovers. Uh, you have Garrett, you have Clowney. Uh, so you, you can bottle up Najee pretty well. Obviously, you know what he likes to do. You study well, you prepare well. I just think that, you know, all of those factors is going to make it too much for Spades in this one, uh, who I just, I don't think his style is very conducive for playoff football, whereas I think yours is built for it. So I'm taking the Browns. Yeah, and this, this is another one where I got a little reckless the last uh, three weeks, and I'm I'm looking to, to maybe right some of those wrongs. And it'd be nice to have uh, another shot at Spades before the season is out. Yeah. Yeah, I think exactly what Faz just said. It's Spades' style is it, it's probably not playoff football, especially in the, in who he's going to be playing. Um, I expect Bomber to again lean on Chubb a little bit more this game. I definitely expect you to be prepared. I think it's going to come down who's more prepared, and I take you in probably ten out of ten times. I think you're going to be prepared for what he's going to be doing. Absolutely, uh, you're going to be ready, and I think that for sure it's going to be a lot of Chubb. And I think it's going to be actually a defensive clinic. I think you're going to put on a defensive clinic and uh, kind of maybe put some fear into the heart of whoever advances next. That would be a nice change. I'll tell you what, if I put on a little defensive clinic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but that would then, I think, leave uh, me against you. So It yeah. sure would. And I was thinking I might just let you guys debate, and I'll just pick a winner on on who wins that. But uh, <laughs> instead I, of doing to be that, honest, yeah. um, mm-hmm. I, I will make a call here. And I think, I will say, it, it's going to be close. Um, you guys split in the regular season as well. Yep. Um, both very good games. I'm going to lean Q in this one uh, due to the Lamar factor. I think it's going to be a sloppy game, honestly. Um, I think defenses are going to come to come to play in that one. I think there's might be a couple passing mistakes here and there. Uh, but I think that you know Lamar has the ability to create... Uh, in the way that um, Bomber can't really do. So I think it's, you know, some of those those red zone plays where, you know, Lamar can get out, he can find an open guy. Um, I think in a very close game, it's going to be one, two plays make a difference, and I'm going to take the Ravens for those uh, those couple plays. Sorry, yeah, it's, Bomber. It's, it's funny you say that uh, Lamar has the ability to create. I know, it's like, I can't, I know it. And QB I, knows exactly was, what I'm about to say. I was waiting to say it because I was going to bring it up for actually yeah, because, as well. Uh, so. that's, that was the difference, I think. The the final score I think was a little more lopsided than the game was, yeah. but those mm-hmm. two plays with Baker Mayfield where there was nothing yes. there and he was able to to break away and, and one of them was a, decent, was a decent uh, distant one I think it was like five yard touchdown, but the other mm-hmm. was probably about fifteen and yeah uh, that was the difference in the in our game. But I I can't disagree with you. I've been playing like crap the last three weeks going into this playoffs. I'm backing in as the five seed and and QP just coming off a win against Spades so. Um, I can't fault you for going for that. And it's, it's tough to argue against it. He's the defending champ. So until somebody knocks him off, that's, that's the way it is. Yeah. Basically the same thing reiterating, except for on the other side. Uh, I think, like you said, the Lamar factor is also a Chubb factor. That's yeah. True. Uh, and his defense is just, his defense is pretty damn good. It does give up yards, but it forces turnovers. Um, I think that if the weather is bad, I'm definitely in trouble. And, the red zone, it's like he said, it's he used Baker Mayfield used his feet the last game against me. He even had a rollout, a uh, nice scramble or off the off the foot, off right. the back foot throw uh, in the end zone as well. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I definitely think it's probably going to be close. I could see it being really sloppy, um, possibly. I think maybe we might try to force it, um, but I, I, I don't have a winner. It's going to be a tough one. Yeah, I think it'll be I a good see one to watch. going either way. Yeah, definitely. Got to get some commentary on that one. Yeah, what that does. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That does create the AFC Championship and the NFC Championship will both be third games of the season, uh, both divisional matchups. So. Yeah, 
And the, I mean, those third games are always just just sloppy. They're slugfests. Yeah. They're you know everybody's plays. Nothing mm-hmm. seems to be working. It's just like who can kind of escape in a way. Yeah. yeah. So that makes the Super Bowl then QP against you. Um, the Thanos boys. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think. Uh, I think for the similar reasons you took QP, I, I'm going to take him in this one. L- Lamar, that's uh, it's a huge wild card. It can it can hurt you because he does have the tendency to to sail those. But so does Jordan Love. So yeah. to me, that's a wild yeah. Card. I'd say that sounds um, familiar. And if I'm if I'm taking one of the two, it's got to be Lamar over uh, over Jordan Love. At least this season, and maybe the next season, we'll see what happens after uh, he gets his dev bumps and yeah, and you get a hold of him for a couple seasons, but. Uh, right now, Lamar is obviously the X factor. The Ravens defense isn't that far off from uh, the Carolina defense. Um, it may not stay that way with you know some older guys on that front seven. Mm-hmm. But uh, for now, again, defending champ uh, with a really good team, it's tough to pick against them. So I think that'll be a that may be one that uh, comes down to the wire and is, is a really good game. But I think Lamar makes the difference. Yeah, I uh, I definitely can't disagree. Uh, you know, as as you guys know, all three of us have have played in and, and won a Super Bowl. Super Bowls are are ugly. Nobody yeah. goes through Super Bowls with you know, wow, what an efficient game on offense. Yeah. Like there's always mistakes. There's missed reads. Uh, Prime is is in the chat. You know, legacy game, legacy drive, mm-hmm. legacy coin flip. Um, <laughs> you know, it's everything's a mess in Super Bowls. Uh, and Lamar's a great guy to have in one of those games because yes. He can, you know, throw one to the popcorn vendor in the 15th row. Um, but also, he can make things happen. He can dance around. He ignores spies, contains. It might as well not even be there. Um, the guy's a stud, and I think in a sloppy game, uh, it just comes down to defensive user play. Uh, and honestly, I, I take Q over myself as a defensive user. So I'll stick with Q here. I mean, he, he just says no. <laughs> he just straight up takes his head no. <laughs> I just think that it comes down to uh, my team is physical. I think if we can look on the Madden field physical, uh, I like my chances again. I can run the ball pretty well with this team, and that's not something I'm really good at. So when I can get the run game going and decent pass game, uh, I like it. But it's like you said, the Super Bowls are sloppy games, and you have my number if we're going off history. Uh, you're one of the few guys that just I struggle to stop uh, in the air and. That's the biggest thing. And if you can get the ball in the air on me, uh, it's going to be hard for me because I'm going to be focusing on McCaffrey, obviously. Nobody's talking about Christian McCaffrey with uh, like 13 receiving touchdowns, which is absurd for a running back. But uh, it's hard to go against Faz just because, again, he he has my number. So until I can prove otherwise, I have to lean Faz on my end. All right. So uh, there you have it for our playoff predictions. I think there was something else you wanted to go over there, Faz. Yes, sir. So we've got the um, new thing here, new thing on on heat check. Uh, this this could be a, a yearly thing, or if everybody thinks it sucks, we just don't do it ever again. Um, <laughs> but the uh, the pressure scale, the folding chair pressure scale. We're going to uh, kind of rank the teams in playoffs here and, and give you a scale one to ten, ten being the most, one being the least on on who's under the most pressure. Uh, so obviously, this is season one. Those numbers might not be super high. But uh, but as we you know continue to go on through the cycle, maybe they grow. Um, but I can I can kick us off, and I'm just gonna go in okay. in seeding order for the AFC here. Um, so Is this one being the lowest, ten being the worst? Wait, one being the best, ten being the worst. One being the least amount of pressure, ten being the most amount of pressure. Okay. Yeah, ten is like you're you're bursting yeah. through, like you got to win like right now. On you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Ten, ten folding chairs stacked up, and if you fall, one of the legs is definitely broken. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so the the old meets namesake here. Um, <laughs> See, so yeah, I'll I'll start at I've prime at the seven seed. The thing with prime when I when I made these numbers, I took a couple things into effect. You know, how's your your playoff history? How's your you know championship history? Where's your team at in the team building scale? With prime, eighteen time champ, he reminds us all the time. Um, He's always going to go into games kind of favored to win. I mean, we saw it. he's the seven seed, and every one of us basically said that, you know, the two seed he's playing has just absolutely no shot at winning the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Prime, I think, always goes into games with a little bit of pressure. For me, it's not that much yet. Uh, Prime, what makes Prime so good is he's, you know, an excellent team builder, um, whether that's, you know, dragging Tiny over the coals or 
or drafting well. You know, he, he puts teams together very well. He hasn't had any time to do that. The Colts are not very good. Wentz stinks. Um, so I only have him at, at a 5 out of 10 on the pressure scale. Um, so five folding shares. I think it's just he gets a little bit of pressure because he's prime. Everybody expects him to win, but realistically, his team's not there yet. So if he loses, it's not not a big shock. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's probably even less. Like you said, 18 championships, so he, yeah. he doesn't really need another one. But at the same time, nobody, I don't think, hears about it more than prime if he loses. And I'm talking regular True, season yeah. games. I mean, drop one to to Bean or whatever and, and – until you play your next game, you're, you're hearing about it constantly in chat. Um, where I think it's not a lot of pressures, I just don't think he cares that much um, <laughs> because he's, you know, he's fallen asleep to a wall of Simbardis. So um, I think probably, I think you said a five. I, I'd probably go even lower, maybe like a three. Um, yeah. That's now, fair. if he was still the Chiefs and we're going into season three playoffs with no Simbardis, I think that, yes. that number yep. goes uh, significantly higher. Um, but playing as the Colts season one again um I, I think it's like a three so i'm gonna actually go opposite uh just for this one game i think that obviously we know him as a team build everybody that's been around for a while we're not talking about the primer posse but everybody that's been kind of around uh even as long as i have knows how good he is at team building and knows what his team looks like you know by season four um I think that he's expected by because he is expected. He's a seventh seed, but nobody's. We're treating him like he's the second seed. The other yeah. shows are treating him like he's a second seed. The chat, everybody, the whole league feels like he is the second seed. So I would say, for this playoff game, because they have seen each other twice already, because it is one one, uh, and because he is the goat, I think that I'm going to give him this playoff game uh, about a six and a half for the pressure. Because if he loses it, like you guys said, he's hearing about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you're definitely going to have the primer posse, you know, ganging up and joining together. Doing face lost and primer just called him out for his uh, for his lack of, I guess, clutch genes. So it, I think it's I think it's going to be heavy on prime if he doesn't beat the guy that he's in the uh, same division with. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Bomber, you want to go with with seven in the NFC or do you want to just do the, the whole AFC first? Oh, that's fine. We can go with the the seven in the NFC. Uh, seven in the NFC was Doink Face. And after listening to uh, Eminem, I would say yeah. he's probably at like an eight. And uh, judging by the the way the game went, it's not looking good. Um, <laughs> he's got, I think, more than anyone in these playoffs. He's got uh, more people thinking he's going to do something big, or was going to do something big. And uh, so I think that kind of piles on the pressure. Last. Uh, whatever you want mini cycle he lost to you on a a doinked kick which got him his uh his new name and coming in and then very first game it looks like he's gonna lose to noel i think he had a ton of pressure and it looks like he kind of crumbled yeah. under it mm -hmm. yeah I, I can absolutely see that i mean for the rest of this playoffs he's looking at zero because it looks like he's gonna be watching them but uh <laughs> yeah. but yeah i think he i think he came in with a lot of pressure for this and, and i think for next season he's already he's already boiling in the pressure cooker here. So have to agree there. Yeah. I'd go nine um, as well. I high score, high rating could because we had everybody, like you guys said, the whole, every show, uh, everybody thought that he was going to kind of do it. He just had beaten Faz uh, not too long ago. Moralized me. He didn't just beat me. Yeah. So, so, so I think everybody, especially with Tom Brady, we were starting to consider, you know, doing one of the best passers. And we were starting to put him in that category. People were starting to talk like he was one of the best passers uh, in the SML. So losing to Noel, who is not, no offense, Noel, uh, who's not been, you know, one of the upper echelon guys of the SML, I think in this, in the way he's losing as well, putting up seven points through three quarters, damn near. Uh, I think that the pressure was definitely on. It's going to be on even more as Tom Brady gets older. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. So uh, we got the sixth seed in the AFC with Spades. Um, you know, one of the remaining hopes for the uh, the Primer Posse here. I have him pretty low. Um, I have him at a four out of ten, and I think the reason for that is yeah, he's rocking Mariota at quarterback. Um, I don't think that he's obviously he's new, so it's not like he has a ton of. Actually, I don't think he has any SML playoff history. Um, maybe a game in the mini cycle. Yeah, I think um, he got in with the Ravens. Yeah. Uh, and lost to Dan, I think. Uh Prime. You know, it was or Prime, prime. Yeah. too. That's right. Yeah, uh, it was Prime. 
Yeah, it's and let, let's be honest, that was prime super defense. He obliterated the entire AFC. So, uh, so you know, he he doesn't. I don't think he comes in with with too much pressure. He's got a round one game against Meats, who you know we'll be touching on him later. He has not had the most playoff success. So I I think Spades is pretty low for now. Maybe as we you know go further and the Steelers start getting older, this goes up. But for now, I, I have him at four out of ten. Yeah, I would I would agree with the four. I don't think there's much pressure. Um, he's coming in as the third team in the AFC North. Um, but if you lose to Meats in the first round, uh, yeah. as you've seen uh, on on Eminem, he's quick as shit to give anybody that folding chair moniker. And uh, <laughs> losing to him in the first round would definitely, I'm sure, earn you that that nickname at least for the next episode of Eminem. Yep. And I'm going to go a little bit higher again. Uh, I guess I, I feel pressure a little bit more for these guys. I'm going to put uh, spades at about a seven uh, just because he's a two time straight. I know this doesn't mean shit in the SML, but he's a two time defending champion uh, in primer right now. That is true. And he runs through, he runs through those guys and they also worship him. He's like the man in there. So sure, he does put that, down the entire primer if he loses. He's the guy of prime. He's the leader. He's the alpha of prime, the primer posse. It's clear. The other guys do the talking, but he's the good looks. He's the face of the team. Uh, and I'll say that he, his pressure is a little bit higher uh, because who he's playing as well, what you guys just said. Yeah. He's playing the, the reason that this whole segment is what it's called. Uh, yeah. If he loses to the guy who's known for fumbling the bag in the late, in the late times of January, February, then I think that it only adds to the more pressure that he's not having much success in the SML so far when it comes to playoffs. Yeah, I could definitely agree with that. Um, next up, we got Faz with the the sixth seed in the NFC. I don't know. I don't think I don't think you're feeling too much pressure. I'd put it maybe at a five. Um, got two Simbardis. There's there's really no need to feel pressure. The only the only thing is you're you're coming in with. One of the better teams that are in these playoffs. Of course, we saw the best team, I think, in the playoffs just get run over by Noel. So I don't know how much team means. Um, yeah. So if, if anything, maybe maybe just because you're the Panthers, maybe it's like a yeah. five. Um, but coming in with two Simbardis, I don't think there's any pressure. Yeah. Yeah, I think that it's about the same. Uh, with, but as far as your legacy goes, if you're asking Prime, I do think it's about a nine and a half because yeah. – <laughs> because you don't have that X factor gunslinging quarterback that you've had for like the last what four to five seasons, dating back to the last cycle yeah. with Spencer Norton. So uh, I don't think there's much on the line for uh, for season one, especially. You got to dev Jordan Love. Everybody who has played Madden knows that you can't really have much success with a guy like Jordan Love year one, um, except for Spades, who won the Super Bowl in the other league with Jordan Love. So I would say oh, probably at a five right now. Going higher. Yeah. I'd say it's a five right now, yeah. uh, especially because the NFC, I don't know. I don't think the NFC, no disrespect to the NFC, but I don't think it's, when you look at the teams, I don't, I don't really fear anybody on that side except for Faz and maybe Dan. So I'd say five. I think a lot of it with the NFC is you don't, you don't see the teams like the 49ers. Um, you don't have Cowboys. Like, you have the Cardinals there. The Cowboys are a really good team. You just don't have a lot of those really good teams mm -hmm. that then made it. Um, so I, I don't think that anybody really stands out as like they're that much better. So I, I don't think there's a ton of pressure on that side. Yeah. Yeah. You, I, you I, really I, just had the Bucks, the old Mutt Bucks. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're probably gone. So, yeah. you know, I'd, I'd have to agree with the number you guys gave. I also agree with the point that, you know, for Prime, if you ask him, it's, it's like a 15 <laughs> out of 10, 20 out of yeah, 10. Yeah. 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 If there's an early yeah. round exit, yeah, it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a legacy Prime, on the Prime, Polly, and Dan are just just chomping at the bit. They're waiting, yes. Yeah, but for the rest of everybody else in the league, I, I don't think it's too much of a too much of a concern. So, you know, we're we're playing free. I'm you know I'm, I'm gonna whip out the old mat here. I'm I'm happy to be here. There you go. So, <laughs> oh shoot, it's my turn. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, <laughs> so that that takes us to the five seed in the AFC, which is you, bomber. Um, I have this a little higher just because I think if you were to talk to a lot of people in the league, you would probably be the favorite. Um, you did win season one in the last cycle. We're, we're back at season one again. You do have Chubb, who is, you know, one of the top maybe three to five players in the game, if not the top one. Um, very good defense. You've generally run through regular seasons. 
So I, I have you at a 7 out of 10. I don't think that I could go any higher just because you do have such a recent Simbardi that it's like, I know for me, like after I won my first one, it was like, <laughs> ah. <laughs> yep. I don't really care what happens the next like season or two. Like I'm, I'm kind of just still chilling and happy. So I, I would assume you're, you're probably feeling less pressure than seven out of 10. Uh, I think, you know, some people in the league might, might put it a little higher. So I put it there, but I would guess you're probably feeling around like a four, maybe a three. <laughs> yeah. I, I would give myself right around a four or a three. Cause like yeah. you said, I came in when I joined SML, I wanted to win one Simbardi. I got one Simbardi. <laughs> Anything else is just extra. Um, I'm 41 years old. I out here playing with a bunch of 20 year old kids. I'll, if I can come out on top once, that's that's good. What's the Toby Keith song? Uh, ain't as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. So I got my one. If, if I get Always any more, show all of a sudden. yeah. If I get any more, then that's great. But um, now nah, I would I would say probably around a three. Now maybe a little more for this first game because I don't want to have another first round exit, especially yeah. with everybody saying Woods has especially no chance. With Woods. Yeah, that yeah. really helps uh, a lot to make it no pressure, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I got my one. Yeah, I think this first round game is the highest pressure, I would say, obviously, just yeah. because uh the history and then also because before that little skid that you went on, you were the favorite by far. You looked the most dominant in the games consistently. Uh, so I'd put it at a three as well. Like similar to you, that's the same thing I, that I feel. You got one. You got your Simbardi. Feels good. Uh, anything that comes after that is now extra. Yep. I mean, and there's a ton of good teams in this league, so it's getting yeah. one is. I mean, there's guys that probably should yeah. have one and don't. So yeah, I'm more than happy. All right. So number five is Dan. Uh, Dan in the NFC. I think the pressure's a little higher. Um, he took the took the Falcons, uh, plenty of good teams still available, and he he went with the Falcons to follow you. Um, I th I think it's probably a six or a seven. Um, I think maybe a little bit of that pressure falls away if he doesn't have Pitts because he can kind of oh, I don't have my best player or really any any good player on offense, so maybe a little bit falls away there. But he's playing MYT, a game he's expected to win, um, and and the Falcons are are of his own making. He, he took them when there was plenty better on the board. He can't complain about his team. Um, and then, you know, he hasn't had a, a Super Bowl appearance since the fat finger and prime doesn't let him forget that either. Um, ever since he traded lever or whatever his name was, his quarterback there, um, yeah. he hasn't been back. So I think there's a, a mounting pressure on Dan and I think it's probably about a seven right now. Yeah, I, I think that number is a, a culmination of, you know, what's kind of been building over, you know, a couple a couple seasons here. Um, really mostly leading back to, to 21. Um, you know, like we said with me, Prime, he's got a couple guys he really likes to chirp. Dan is number one on that list. Uh, so you know that, you know, if, if he doesn't win, uh, you know, Prime's not going to not going to let him forget it. He does get a slight pass early because of the Falcons. They're terrible. Uh, no quarterback. Pitts is hurt, so he's not even going to have you know his only real weapon. He traded Ridley. I don't really know why, but he traded traded Ridley. Um, so you know he he doesn't have a lot to work with. So I, I think that keeps the number lower than it would be. Um, so I, I would probably go with that six. But uh, I do think that you know as we go further into the cycle here. We're going on a pretty long stretch of Dan not having an appearance or a win for quite a while, as you said. So, yep. yeah, I agree. Uh, it's got to be high again because who it is. I think he had like the he was the first to a hundred or the fastest to a hundred wins yep. in SML history. His uh, winning percentage was like the good NBA players' free throw percentage is like eighty five percent or something. Um, I do give him a pass for the team that he has. I think that the team that he has, it's one, it is one of the worst. Um, it's not Detroit, but it is one of the worst. I would say that... Subtle flex. I, yeah. <laughs> I'd say that I'd give him probably like an eight just because, again, we're going like dating back to how many seasons before um, 21? It was, what, three or four seasons before he had made the, Super the last three or four seasons before yeah. Super Bowl appearance? Yeah, at least. Uh, Prime yeah, yeah, he had, the, he had the NYT loss in there. His first one that he won was against me. Um, and I then, think it was four because I think QB made the first one against yep. uh, Meats. Meats, that's right. And then I think Dan made the next three. Yeah. 
okay, so probably like five seasons now or six seasons, yep. seven seasons maybe even. But uh, he hasn't had a Super Bowl win since I first joined. That first Super Bowl win is the – I didn't even join yet. I joined in the off season. I played eight seasons at 21. So he's going on a while. Uh, it's time that you know the pastor does have to show up in the big in the big moments again. It's what he's known for. Yep. So that takes us to the fourth seed in the AFC, which is uh, which is Woods and the Bills. I'm gonna be honest. I got them at a one out of ten. They're just they're thrilled to be playing an extra game. Um, I think you know he got in because Mike couldn't beat Figs. Um, <laughs> you know I I think that that Woods is just happy to be playing a playoff game. Uh, he's gonna go you know throw some some Josh Allen bazooka balls at the wall and see what sticks against Bomber. I don't think anybody expects him to win the game. I think Woods is just uh just kind of cherishing the extra XP this week. So, 1 out of 10 for Woods and the Bills. Yeah, if if we can go 0, I'd go 0 because <laughs> nobody expected him to be here. I don't think he expected him to be here when he saw that Mike only had to beat Fig. Um, yeah. And then Mike doesn't beat Fig and and all he's got to do is get by KJ. And so he's in. No show is giving him a shot. I think he's playing with house money and and he's just happy to be in the playoffs. Yep. I'd give him one out of ten. Keep it short and sweet. Easy. Yeah, there you go. All right, so number four in the NFC, NYT with the Cardinals. Um maybe a little bit of pressure. He has been to a Super Bowl before and, and to get there he went through Dan. Um Cardinals, one of the how I would say they're probably the second best team in the NFC as far as talent wise. Um, and now you're playing a Falcons team that everyone has said it's it's only Pitts on offense, and now he doesn't have Pitts. So uh, there's probably about a four for pressure there for uh, for NYT. Still not much because I don't think anybody's really expecting him to beat Dan. Um, but when you look at the two rosters and, and the playoff history, he may be putting a little bit more pressure on himself. So I, I got four folding chairs on NYT. Yeah, I'd go I'd go a little bit higher. Um, just because of the roster differences. Uh, I think I'd go maybe a five and a half out of 10. Um, and you know, it's, it's Kyler. He's got escape artist. He can do unbelievable things on the field. Uh, he's got Hopkins. He's got uh Buda Baker on defense. He's got Chandler Jones. He's got JJ Watt. Like it's, it's a pretty loaded team. Uh, and he's going up against, you know, Albert Oguka Makanakana. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's pretty lopsided, but it's also Dan. And, you know, if, if you're polling 32 players in the league, I, what, 25 at a minimum are probably going to say that Dan's going to win. So I, I think the pressure is low from that. I think it's a little bit there just because, you know, it is a lopsided matchup roster wise. But I, I don't think enough people are going to be picking NYT to win this one that he's going to feel any real, real pressure here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, low pressure because who he's playing. Uh, but a little bit higher because the teams are a lopsided difference. I mean, Cardinals versus Falcons, that's, that's a lopsided difference. Um, so I'd give them a four and a half. All right. So that'll take us to um, to actually the, the namesake of the scale here. The three seed meets in the Chargers, and you know what? You can't have a scale pretty much based off the guy without giving him a nine out of ten. Um, <laughs> like you said... Um, and in Eminem, you know, he's he's throwing out the folding chair label faster than he throws drags. Um, yes. You know, he, he can't wait to pass this off onto somebody else. Uh, he's got a favorable first round matchup, honestly, out of anyone in, in the AFC. You probably would say you'd, you'd prefer Woods and then maybe Spades after that. So it's it's not a bad first round matchup. You know, he didn't draw Prime. He didn't draw Bomber. Um so, you know, it's it's a winnable game. It's it's a style he can beat. We haven't seen him. Did we see him in the playoffs in the first, you know, mini cycle here? Yeah, I beat him. Okay, so we did see him, and, and he proceeded to lose. Yep. Um, so, you know, it's it's been a while since we've seen him out of the first round. Uh, obviously, you know, Prime's going to drill the narrative in. I'm going to, just because, you know, it's fun. Um, so I, I have meets at 9 out of 10. Yeah, I think uh, I've got the folding chair. It's got to be 10 out of 10. Um, you know, he he can say stuff doesn't bother him. Man, you like you you said, he passes off that name to anybody. You lose mm -hmm. a game and you're, you're oh, maybe he's the new folding chair. Mm -hmm. Nah, meets you're the folding chair. Um, he said it about Q and the guy's coming off a Super Bowl with Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he started it to took say a while that. for him to get, yeah, I don't know. I went to the conference championship my first year when I joined. Yeah, 
Um, he, he tried saying futures got a, a lower playoff win percentage. Yeah. Like he's just, he's just coming out for any possible way to pass that off. And he's, he knows a loss here to spades as the three seed coming in against the set, the six seed. That's a, that's a 10 out of 10. Um, there's, there's no way he doesn't feel any pressure. Yeah. I also give it high. I would say probably 10 out of 10 as well. Um, he also said Bomber uh, had six, five, lost five out of his last six or something yeah. like that, and, and he only lost four in their total season. So yeah. uh, he's all over the place. Also, he has the Chargers, one of the better teams in Madden. Uh, he has, obviously, one of the better quarterbacks to dev up. I did it pretty easily. He can, He's going to do it, obviously. I saw he's top three or top four, so he's going to do it again. Um, it's just a really solid team in Madden, and he does have a – he's playing an opponent that – gives up a lot of yards. It's going to be an, a slugfest on offense if they can both, you know, connect. So I think it's 10 out of 10. He's a third seed. Uh, he's the last time, you know, he was talking about success was Freddie Golden. Uh, that was like Madden 20, Madden 19. Um, so I'd give him 10. Yeah. And he's currently up seven, nothing over spades right now with four forty one oh, to go in the second quarter. Oh, here we go. Okay. They're playing. So nice. See, but spades is driving. All, All right, right, so that's going to so bring we'll, us I'll to... I'll be turning that on right after we uh, disconnect this. Yeah. That's going to bring us to Polly as the number three seed. And I, I'm not sure what to make of this. <clears throat> um, as much as he talks about he's not very good, and um, I think we've we've more than seen that that's not true. Um, I don't know. He's he's one of those guys that will tell you he's not good until someone else tells him he's not good, and then suddenly he's, yeah. he's really good and they're garbage. Um, so I, th- I think actually, I think... the the pressure is on. I think he's got at least like a six. Um, he won't ever admit it because he'll say he's just happy to be here. Got broken thumbs, whatever. Uh, dog ate his, ate his controller. I don't know. Um, but I, I think it's a six. I mean, you don't play over a thousand CFM games and not have a single championship <laughs> um, without any pressure building up on you. So uh, I'm going to say it's a six. Yeah, I was I was gonna go a little higher for Polly. I, I think he's at a seven. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's any higher just because he he did draw me in the first round. So I think a lot of people will will give a pass if he loses the game. But I mean, Polly for as much as he talks himself down, which is you know arguing Matt territory. Um, Polly is a very solid player. He spends time studying. He knows your plays. Um, he knows all the little details of the game that he claims he doesn't know, um, oh, yeah. like spin move. Um, so, you know, I, I think there, there is a pretty fair amount of pressure on Pauly and, you know, he, he has a good Madden team. Daniel Jones stinks, but Saquon's good. The team's, you know, yeah. fast everywhere. Um, you know, I'm going seven out of 10 for Pauly. I'm going to go even higher than that. Uh, I'm going to say only, I'm actually, I'm going to say this, this year six, because he drew, probably the hardest round matchup that you can draw in the first round. Uh, but moving forward, I am going to go with uh, eight, closing in on nine, because uh, this is the conference to do it. Like you guys said about me, before the blip, that last conference that in Dump, that was, this is one of those similar conferences. There's two you know, top dogs, and then the rest are fighting to see who's going to take maybe one that the other spot. And all it takes is Dan and Faz you know, playing each other one time in the second round of the matchups, and then that's where Pauly gets in in the conference championship. So I'm going to go with the eight, uh, close to nine, because this is a conference that he can possibly take uh, if, you know, if the chips fall where they may. Right. Yep. And I don't know why I'm putting this out, because it'll probably be over by the time this airs, but it's 7-7 seven, seven spades in, uh, in meets. Okay. All right. So about as expected, we're off to a high-scoring start. Yeah. Um, so two seed is as we get to the end of this thing here in the <laughs> AFC we got Beans, um, and this is pretty similar to Woods. I've got him at a two out of ten, just because I don't think anybody expects him to beat Prime. Um, so I I think you know you're new to the SML. We haven't really seen you in the playoffs. Um, actually, we definitely haven't seen you in the playoffs. He came in with the yeah. Pats and he was pretty rough with them. Uh, the only reason that he's not a one is just because he does have freight train, um, and Prime's team isn't quite there yet. But even with that. I I can't go higher than a two on beans. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, first playoff appearance, and you draw prime. I don't think there's there's much yeah. pressure here yet. Yeah, two on my end as well. All right, so the number two seed in the NFC is Noel. I've got this one at like a seven or eight. Um, Noel doesn't say much in chat, but talk about last year saying that he wasn't very good, and uh, he'll 
he's he's lurking in chat and he'll respond he about, said he's about how everybody missed when he was really good with the Buccaneers and uh so I think it really bothers him that uh that he had that down cycle and everybody kind of the majority of the league anyway missed where he was a playoff team and kind of just identifies him as that you know top 10 pick every mm -hmm. year and uh so I think the pressure is on him to to have a good showing and and obviously from what we've seen so far against uh Doink face, he's he's had a pretty good showing, and and maybe some of that pressure will come off if he finishes out that game. But uh, I think going into the playoffs, it was probably about a seven or eight. Yeah, I, I can see that. I think he's one where the pressure he would put on himself is higher than what I think the the league would see him at. Yeah. Um, I could personally see him at a five and a ten. I think he came in. He does have a good team. Obviously, Rogers at the end of his career. Um, you know, you, you would like to win a couple before you know you lose the throw power on him. But you're coming in, you're playing the Mutt Bucks. That team is, you know, absolutely stacked. Um, Eminem just had, you know, an hour-long show where Matt just praised Doinks the entire time. Uh, so, you know, I think league-wide, maybe five, and I think the pressure he would put on himself would be around that seven that you gave him. Okay. I'm going to give him the same thing that uh, Close to Bomber gave him. I'm going to give him a seven as well. Uh, he's got Green Bay, really good team for the NFC North, especially in year one. Um, and he's 13 and four. You, when you're 13 and four, you got a little bit more pressure to not blow it in the, in the first round or second round. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does, especially when he plays the guys that maybe he thinks are better than him in his mind. So uh, I'll give him a seven. So that'll take us to our last team in the AFC here. Q, uh, we got you as the one seed. I have you at a six out of 10, just because of basically the fact that I think, you know, a lot of people, um, if they don't consider Bomber favored, they consider you. It's really a toss up between the two uh, and which team you like more. Obviously, good team, but at the end of the day, you're the reigning champ. You know, this is, you know, cherry on top. Um, you know, you're happy. You, you won one with the freaking Lions, so that <laughs> the team doesn't matter yeah. at all. Um, you know, I have you at six out of 10 just based on, I think, league expectations. But like I said with, you know, with Bomber, I would assume you're putting yourself at like a three or a two or not on the chart. <laughs> I'm actually putting myself even higher just because obviously I just, oh, there you go. for my own self, yeah, just for my own <laughs> self. I am the number one seed in a tough division or a tough conference um, and I'm the reigning champ. So I look at it more like obviously being the reigning champ, the moment you get knocked off, especially if I get knocked off in the first game that I play, uh, maybe it was not a fluke, but maybe it was just, that was my one chance of uh of glory and i'll be a you know second or conference champion type of guy uh, but also if i do lose i'm actually more to be honest i'm more ready for the off season i'm ready to kind of build my team i i'm probably i'm kind of old and i look forward to that yeah it's funny you say that because i, I think maybe there's a lot of guys i know for example i'm looking re ready to the uh we're looking ahead to the off season because yeah I've, I've already played with this team for mm -hmm. three seasons i want to i want to start building them um but yeah i I would have had you lower until you just said what you said. So maybe I'll put yeah, you now all of a sudden I feel like I have to change my number. Um, because I think maybe you're putting more pressure on yourself. I mean, obviously, yeah. Nate will call you a folding chair if you lose. But, yeah, I don't um, want to be on kind of those other shows. Yeah, but outside of that, um, like you said, you got the Simbardi <laughs> just last season. I guess as as uh, trying to defend it, maybe there's a little more pressure. But yeah, I, I would think maybe a four or a five. All right, so that's that brings us to one last one, and it's his future back. He's the number one <laughs> seed. How much pressure is on future? It's tough to gauge. He doesn't say much in chat, um, but I think just thinking for myself, I would say he's probably at a seven or an eight. Um, similar to Noel, you know, he was apparently really good before the majority of the league joined. Um, so people don't know him as, you know, future was really good. They know him as future was up and down he'd maybe make the playoffs sneak a win in here or there and and that was about it and occasionally be a top five pick um so i think there's probably a little pressure that he's putting on himself just to get back to that point i don't know if from the outside there's much pressure um because he's kind of surprised everybody by getting to this spot um so so i would put it as seven or eight and mostly internal yeah so i i was actually gonna go pretty high for future uh i'm going i'm going at nine uh, so he's got the one seed. He has a very win now team with New Orleans. Um, they regress pretty quickly. Uh, they have a bad cap situation, so you're going to lose a lot of good players. 
Um, they're one of those teams where if, if it's not now, it, it might not be for a while. Um, and then there is that, that is feature back. You hear it on so many shows. It's, it's on first and goal very often. Um, it's you know, every prime, you know, prime time stream, you know, that, that features in, Oh, ooh, is, is, is future back features back boys. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people kind of just give up on it after a while. But if he comes in as the one seed, he swept me, he split with Dan, he split with, uh, with Doinks. Um, if you come in and, and lose your, your first game, I think people just immediately, okay, future's not back. Uh, and your pressure for the rest of the cycle goes down to like zero because people just kind of, whatever, he's not back. <laughs> um, but I think for the first game, I, I think it's pretty high. Um, I feel like that whole answer to that question is riding on this first game. So I'm rolling nine out of 10. Yeah, I can see that. Am I froze on your guys' screen? You are, but yeah. uh, it's in a good position. Yeah, so yeah. it's uh, so it keep me it's looking like I'm sleeping. So thankfully, uh, I only got one more team to get through. Yep. Yeah, I'd say future also high. Uh, I would put it probably at like a nine or a ten as well. You when you get to the first seed, especially when you haven't done it in you know said four Maddens, three Maddens, um, I think that the pressure's on to show what he's about, show what if he's really is back, uh, and to see what he can do in this NFC. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. No, that's it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the last one. Last <laughs> so yeah, that's that's all we got. Unless you, either of you guys have anything else. No, nope, I got to get ready for uh, this game against Woods in about forty-five minutes. All right, there well, you go. Tune in good forty-five. Luck, uh, time to go watch meets and spades. Happy playoffs, yeah. SML. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Heat Check. All right.